Hi friends, good, almost, it's still morning. Good morning. It's Wednesday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. Hello everyone. I see everybody popping in. We were doing a little bit of chatting in the chat. Today is a different day. Normally I don't go live on Wednesday. I go live on Thursday or Friday, but I have some other commitments this week. So we are doing it today again. So happy Wednesday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. Today is a little bit different. Um, we're not going to make a card. We're going to do a pause and paint. We're going to paint a flower composition. And I'm going to do some washi watercolor. I'm going to talk about White Knight's watercolor along the way. And we're going to do a little bit of color mixing. So today is a little bit of a mashup of a bunch of things. So... Um, we're going to have some fun with it though. I felt like, I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but this week feels like it's the longest week ever. And lately I've been having a lot of weeks like that. So let's take a peek at everybody who's popped in. We've got so many friends who've joined us. I see. Hello, everybody. Wow. Lots of friends. Hello from Northern Arizona. Hi, Donna's here. Cherie, Emma. Gosh, so many friends. Zan, Donna, Arlene, hello. Okay. All right. We're just going to dive in. Now, um, the supplies that I'm using today, I will link them up in the description on Facebook and YouTube after the live. I ran out of time to do it right before the live. Um, and I was just kind of piddling around and seeing what else I could bring into our live today. So I will put them in the description, but I will talk about everything along the way. If you're on my email list, I sent out an email yesterday that shared some of the supplies that I'd be using. And if you're painting along, I hope that you got to pull your supplies together. So, okay. If you have questions along the way, just pop them in the chat with um, a question. <laughs> Donna already has a question. With the word question, um, Donna asked, do you use Tim Holtz pencils? Yes, I have used Tim Holtz pencils. I do have a couple tutorials on this channel where I've used those pencils, those new watercolor pencils. I'll link them up after the live, Donna. Today, we're going to be using a different colored pencil, but those pencils are pretty amazing. So, okay. All right, let's just go ahead to our overhead cam and let's get started. Okay, friends. Oh, need a little drink today. Okay, now, we've got a lot of things we're going to talk about today. So the supplies I have, I have got a pad of Canson Heritage 100% cotton watercolor paper. I have my um, White Knights watercolors. Now, this is a set of White Knights watercolors that I have from tubes. So I have taken the tubes and I've put them in this ceramic uh, or porcelain porcelain um, palette. I have used this palette. I have a couple different um, couple different watercolor brands in this palette. This is a really great palette. I'll make sure I link this up. Um, it's got plenty of room for mixing and it's got 20, uh, 20 wells. And those wells are like really super deep. And I've talked about this quite a bit. I've also mentioned this, if you're part of my Craft Your Joy community, I've shared this in there. So I'm going to be using this. I also have another little, this is a white porcelain little dish. This is like a tapas um, dish. So you, you use it to serve food. I picked these up at Home Goods, and I just picked up another big pile of them. They come in like a set of four or six, and I put little um, felt feet on the bottom when I lay them on a table so it doesn't scratch the table. So I'm going to use this for mixing. We're going to walk through those colors and everything. I also have some colored pencils. I got my brushes. I'm using rounds. I'm using the Princeton Heritage brushes today. And I also have a various, oops, there's a little brush right there, a bunch of colored pencils. I'm using the Faber-Castell polychromos today. Um, you can use Prismacolor, you can use whatever. These, we are going to be using these at the end. 
uh, for detail, for adding detail and adding shading to our washi watercolor, okay? All right, let's dive in. So I am going to open up my paper here. Let's take my face off for, for the moment so I can get a little space here. This is the composition that we're going to work on today. Washy watercolor, a little bit of leafery, and I wanted to talk about composition. And this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take this off because we're going to be, this is just an idea of what we're going to be doing. But I'm going to be working on this piece of watercolor paper. Now, just talk a little bit about composition, especially this particular bouquet of composition. If you think about it in terms of an upside down triangle, so like a pyramid, right? So an upside down triangle, and we've got these little areas where we want some big honking flowers, three big flowers and a couple little flowers, and then some leafery coming out of it. And then when you're thinking about your composition in this way, it kind of helps give you some um, some guidelines, some guardrails to work within. And it keeps it really easy breezy. So you can see I've got that kind of triangular look and feel here that makes this whole design kind of pull together and look like it belongs together and it has some good movement to it. So that's what we're gonna do today. This is our composition. We're gonna work on this paper and we're going to talk about water ratios. Now, I have brought this little graphic in many times before, and I've talked about this on the channel many, many times. We have, when you're working with watercolor, you have a whole, you, have, you can create different values with the same color. And I have broken it down this way so it's super easy to remember. You can do middle step values too, but just these three big ones kind of help give you a good visual of what I'm talking about when we're adding water to pigment. So lots of water, a little bit of water, a lot of pigment is whole milk. So this is like full strength, or it's also called mass tone. That's another big technical term for it, mass tone. Um, let me just check something real quick to make sure. Okay, there we go. And then less water, more pigment. I call this 2% milk. This is a stronger value. It's a little less strong as the whole milk, but it is more strong than the skim milk. So this could be our first layer. Skim milk, this is like a washy, washy layer. A lot of water, not a lot of pigment. So this is a really good, I'm gonna hold this in case anybody wants to take a quick screenshot of it, just for reference. I'll also have this scanned and it'll be in the Craft Your Joy community, so you can take a peek at that. I think it might already be there. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Now, before we dive in, I want to talk a little bit about the White Knights watercolors. One of the things that we've, that I've dedicated and I've shared with you that we were going to do on this channel, let me take my face off, is talk about the different brands of watercolor and what makes them different. So White Knight's watercolors, I've shared, they come in tubes. I'll just pull one of the tubes out. They come in tubes. They also come in pans. So this is the pan set that I have. I have a couple pan sets um, of White Knight's. I'm going to pull out, we're going to, I'm going to pull out this sap green if I can get it out because it's kind of sticky. Um, you can see all the different colors. White Knight's watercolors are super, super vibrant. They come in these full pans. This is olive green. I want to pull this sap green out. Whoops, because we're going to be using that today. So they come in these full pans. So a lot of paint in this brand. I really like this brand. It's a pretty high end, um, pretty high end, affordable watercolor brand um, at an affordable price and they're you're gonna have you've got so much paint it's just so much paint that they are really really super high quality and they are not like um, you're gonna have this set for a really really long time 
and they are budget friendly for an artist quality paint. Now they also come in, so they come in these tins and they also come in these, um, these really big, I've used white knights on the channel before so you probably have seen me use these before. This is another set. So they're very similar to the Rosa Gallery in that they come in those full pans. But the Rosa Gallery pans look a little bit different. You can grab these on Amazon as well. I'll make sure I have all the links down below. But their colors are super, super vibrant. Let me get that up so that you can see. Those colors are super vibrant. I really love them. I'm really just, I really do enjoy the pans, but I'm really loving the paints from the tubes. And this is, this is a really big set. You've got a lot of mixing area. It's really, really nice. Okay, let's pull these out. So I've custom made this set of 20, and I've got some similar colors in here. I also have some of their granulating colors and some of their opaque colors, like pastels. They're just really, really beautiful. Okay, and I'm gonna show you the difference. So here's my sap green that is in my uh, paint, and then here's my sap green that's in my pan. And I'm gonna show you some of the differences when we start to paint, when we start to paint. Okay, all right, let's put this to the side. I've got all the things. Let's move this over here and kind of get started with our composition. I am going to, don't hesitate to ask questions along the way, especially if you, if you have some questions about this particular paint. I want to go in and talk a little bit first about this concept of water ratios and values. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to hold this in my hand over here. This color right here is called Geranium Red. Let's give this a quick spritz. What I really do enjoy about this, these colors is that they really, this brand, is that it really does activate very well with water. You really don't have to do a whole lot to get it nice and juicy. This is Geranium Red. I really love this color. So we're gonna, I'm gonna use it for my example on water ratios. Pull this to our side here. So, a lot of watercolor, a lot of pigment. You can see all that pigment on my brush. A lot of pigment. So, I've got a really nice, solid color. Now, if I clean off my brush, okay, and then just start adding a little bit of water to the edge here, and I can start to pull this out. And I'm going to start to get a value that's more like a 2% milk, right? So I'm going from a dark to a medium. Clean off my brush again. Oh, I just don't, I just realized I don't have a paper towel. Keep going. And I can bring that value of color down even more to this really beautiful, like, coral. This color, geranium red, and creating that value scale that's going from right here. So we're up here in our darkest and we're going down here to our lightest. I love this color so much. It's almost a lot like quinacridone, um, quinny coral. I call it quinny coral, quinacridone coral from Daniel Smith, how I can get that beautiful uh, geranium like red. So like an orangey color add more water, I can get that value scale of color. Now, why is this important? Because we are going to be using, doing a lot of washy watercolor techniques today. Let me move, I gotta move a few things out of the way. Some washy, washy watercolor. So first, let's get started with, wow, we have quite a few friends here today. So friends, today is a little bit different. We're not making a card. I'm doing, this is a series called Pause and Paint where we're just taking some time to pause 
and paint. If you're painting along with me, it's sort of like a lesson, or if you're painting on the replay, again, it's still like a lesson. But this is like an opportunity for you and I to paint together, and I completely nerd out about watercolor and techniques along the way. So I hope you, f hope you find this fun and inspiring over our little lunch hour right now. We have some new friends. Just pop in. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I am going to take my pencil just very lightly and just draw this little triangle. Ooh, that's really, really bad looking triangle. A little triangle here just for reference. You could do that on your paper if you'd like or if you don't want to, you don't have to. Remember this, I'm using Canson today, but the Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor is also a really great paper for the techniques that we're going to do today. There's a lot of schmutz there, but that's okay. I'm going to move this over to my left hand side because I am a lefty. And then I'm just going to kind of pop that up to the top a little bit. Now, back to our composition. I'm going to put in... We're going to work on something called blobs to blooms. I'm going to come in with a little bit of this quinacridone red. I'm going to grab quite a bit of it up and put it on my um, put it on my palette here. So I'm going to be working with the red. I'm going to work with the geranium red. So that's quinacridone quinacridone red, geranium red. I'm going to pop in one of my purples. I'm going to grab this Perlene Violet just to show you these colors. Yeesh, look at that. I'm going to grab this Perlene Violet and just pop some down here. I'm going to grab this Dioxazine Violet and pop some here. We're just plunking down a bunch of different colors. Clean off my brush. And we're going to get started with framing in some pieces. So what we're going to do is work from blobs, what I call blobs to blooms. Let's grab a little bit more of that quinacridone red. Clean off my brush and I'm just going to come in and just do big honking circles of color here and then just drop some color in. This is wet into wet. My brush is wet, the paper's wet, and I'm going, I'm moving the color around. Now, one of the things I want to share about this particular brand of White Knights is, which I'm going to get a little bit of water here. I'm going to grab, let's grab one of these greens and just drop it in. You can see that the whoosh factor, see how it whooshes a little bit and wants to move, but it's not super explosive. That's one of the functions of this. That's how this particular brand works. So you do need to coax it around a little bit. So I'm going to coax this around. We've got quite a bit going on here. This is super wet. And this is like my first blob. Now I'm going to come over here and do another blob here and another blob here. And I'm basically just framing out my composition, knowing that three big honking flowers are going to go right here. Let's pop this up a little bit. Let's grab a little bit of this orange and pop this in here. See how that orange in this White Knights brand is not um, it's not doing the super whoosh. The color I mean, uh, that color was geranium red. Look, out, so I'm going to move this around a little bit. I want to get some in here. I also don't want it, these lines to be like super, super hard. So see, I'm just going to kind of coax it out a little bit. A little bit of a wet brush. Coax it out to the outer edge. Just kind of softening those edges, blending them out. Kind of looks a little bit like a hot mess. And if you're painting along with me, you might be a little bit frightened about where we're going to go with this. But don't worry. We're good. We're good. You know what? I'm going to grab... I want to grab this color right here. This is a really super, this is opera. They call it um, neon pink, but it's really opera. Opera pink. So I've got three pinks going here. We're just going to coax that around into that big blob. 
Now if you feel like you've gotten, I've got a little bit too much water going right here, so I'm going to kind of take some of that out. Now normally on Paws and Paints I like kind of bring up some music and I talk a little bit less, but I've kind of modified this particular Paws and Paint to be a little more tutorial-like. So let's just, let's just go with it. And remember, if you have any questions along the way, just pop it in the chat. I'm just taking a clean brush right now. And I'm just kind of running it around the edges a little bit. I'm going to tap off a little bit here. I've got three distinct, three distinct blobs happening. So we're going to dry it. Now you could wait for this to dry before you move on to the next step, but I, I really want to just kind of keep moving here. So we're going to dry this. You can see that those colors are going to fade back a little bit, but we really have a skin milk kind of value of these three colors. The quinacridone red, the geranium red, and the opera pink. I also have a little bit of fresh air in there. Let's go ahead and kind of fix that up a little. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm just going to dry it out. I actually added a little bit of texture. Okay. Just feeling dry. Yeah, feeling dry. Okay. So now what we have is this first layer that have kind of framed in our composition a little bit. Three big honking blooms. We know we're going to nest some more details and we're gonna add in the leafery. But if you're at this point right now and you're painting and you feel a little bit uncomfortable, that's okay. That's how you should feel. You feel a little bit uncomfortable because you're not sure where it's gonna head. So we had some more friends pop in. Susanna from Finland just popped in. Hello, Susanna. Okay. Three big honking blooms. This is my base layer. Now I'm going to start to work a little bit more details on top. Now, last week we did a little bit of a tutorial um, on cabbage roses. And I am going to do a little rosette right up here in this blob right here. So let's go ahead. We're going to come in. Let's get some of that geranium red. I'll pop that up here some of that in here. Dawn just shared, I just purchased Rosa Gallery watercolors. They are covered with paper. What's the best way to remove it? Ah, that's such a good question. Okay, the Rosa Gallery, and that sometimes happens with your watercolors. So when you buy watercolor, they are kind of wrapped like little pieces of candy. They've, they're wrapped in like a wax paper or a, um, uh, like a foil like paper that is white on one side and foil like on the other and that's the way Rosa Gallery is as well but sometimes when you pull them off it doesn't come off clean it kind of sticks to the paint a little bit just take your brush a little bit of water and just kind of scrub it and that paper's just gonna come right off it's gonna come right off and you're good to go um, it is a little bit annoying a little bit of a nuisance because but those paints are a little bit sticky so that's kind of how, that's why it happens. Okay, I hope that, I hope that helps, Dawn. Okay, all right, let's dive in. We're going to do some rosettes. I'm going to start, I've got, I'm using a number 10 brush. And I've got some of this geranium red right here. And we're going to go in and start doing some little, like, S-curves. See, we did this last week little S curves kind of around or little C curves not S curves see how we're doing these little tiny curves and that looks a little bit it's giving us a little bit of a shape remember the the flowers that we're doing today are all abstract I'm cleaning my brush and I'm gonna start to just move that paint around um, I'd love to know if you're using if anyone in our group today, anyone here, has used the White Knights watercolors, let me know how you're feeling about them. Um, or the Rosa Gallery. 
I just chose White Nights today because it was something that um, you all had requested for me to share some thoughts on them. And I've been playing so much with them over the last couple days that I've just been really enjoying working with them. So I wanted to share them a little bit more. All right, I'm brush dancing. I kind of blended that out. We're going to leave that be. We're going to leave that detail be. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to take a little bit of that neon pink and just drop it in. And let it do its thing. Just add a little bit. I just love the way these colors look. They're super, super vibrant. This particular brand, I think it's a good value. You get a lot of paint. It's going to last a long time. It's very, very similar to the Rosa Gallery. If you are using um, Rosa Gallery, very, very similar. Don't need to buy this set if you don't. If you already own others, I'm just sharing. Plus, you could paint this project today with anything that you have, believe me. All right, we're going to come over here and we're going to do another big flower. And this one is going to be kind of my, I'm going to do it, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to do it in the purple, even though I've already done kind of a base background here. I've got a little bit of that dioxazine violet and I'm going to do a little bit of purple. This is a left hand issue here. This particular flower, I call this my signature flower. It's like the five pointed flower, super easy way to do it and I just love sharing this flower. It's super, super easy. Okay, we're going to do little tiny marks here, like little tiny marks. That looks a little bit there, full strength, clean off your brush, then come back in and just kind of blend them out like little petals. Yes, love it. Just kind of let them be. And it's super, super washy. So a lot of the things that we're doing right now are super, super wet into wet. And we're working like in an abstract way. So you can see that everything is kind of, there's shape and there's form for these flowers. But they're very, very abstract and loose and free. Now I'm going to move over here to this one. And I'm going to do one that is a little, I'm going to do a flower. Let's do this opera that's a little bit bigger. So we've got a really big flower, a smaller flower. Now I'm going to do like a medium sized one right here. Cleaning off my brush. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to do a similar flower that I just did. That five pointed flower. Clean off my brush. So those are pretty, it's a lot of paint there. A lot of paint that we're working with. And I need to work a little bit quicker than I am working because I don't want that paint to just kind of leave harsh marks. Oh, but look at that. Look how cute that is. Now these edges that are getting a little harsh, I'm just going to feather them out a little bit with water. And that just kind of gives us that ethereal kind of look and feel for the flower. That center, I'm just going to drop in a little bit of color there. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to see what that looks like. I'm going to drop in a little bit of that perylene violet and let it do its thing. And then take the color that's here and just kind of use it, coax it out a little bit. I'm choked up on my brush and I'm using the very, very tip of the brush, just kind of coaxing these colors out just to give this some shape. Zan just shared, I bought a set of Castle Tube watercolors, but I want to try pans and I don't like the cheap plastic palette I bought at all. I, I feel you. Okay, so the thing about the plastic palettes, I'll talk about them while I'm painting. I'm losing my petal here a little bit, so I'm going to come back in. Just kind of add a little bit of color here. 
just to kind of bring back some of that ethereal kind of look of that petal. Yikes! And it's back. And it's back. So we've got this petal, this really beautiful flower here, here. We've got that rosette up there. So that's our basis for our first three. These two are looking very similar in size. I'm going to come, I'm going to elongate this one a little bit. So you can see I'm just adding a little bit of color. So Zan, the plastic palettes. Here's one thing you can do. The, the issue with plastic palettes, and um, I kind of, I just showed the White Knights one in the beginning. I don't love plastic palettes, so I agree with you, but you can make them work. So one of the things that you can do with your plastic palette is take like a, a little bit of sandpaper and rub it on the plastic palette and kind of rough it up a little bit. And that will help, and then wash it. That will help with helping some of the watercolor adhere to it. Like see how the watercolor is just kind of sitting on top here and I can work with it. It's not pilling or beating up. Plastic palettes, it'll beat up. So the way to resolve that is to use, just kind of rough them up a little bit and then um, wash them. So another way that I've heard uh, works really well is to take like a, an abrasive cleaner, like a Comet or a Barkeeper's Friend, kind of a, a, a soft scrub and just kind of rub the plastic palette and it'll take off that manufacturer shine and it'll help your uh, color stick a little bit more. So give it a try. Now, that you, because you have it, you might as well give it a try, right? And then um, over time, the more you use it, the more your colors are gonna stick. Personally, I really like using um, the plates or even a dish from your, Grab a dish from your uh, from your kitchen and use them. It does beat up horribly, Zan. It does, but it it can you can resolve it over time. Okay, I've got this base going here. Kind of digging it. It's a little bit wet. I'm gonna give it a dry. So we've got our second layer here. Oh my goodness. Look at that flower. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. Susanna just shared the Rosa Gallery watercolors are definitely really different from others you've tried before. They are beautiful. They're beautiful. I would say that the White Knights and the Rosa Gallery are very similar in nature. Similar price structure. I think Rosa Gallery tends to be a little bit less expensive, but they both are starting to offer like lots of different sets, um, you know, like botanical sets and different kinds of options for you. All right, I wanna put some leafery in here. Then we're gonna go back and add some little details. Now I want to do a little something with the leafery that is, if you're an acrylic painter, you may recognize this technique. Um, Okay, we're going to work with sap green and this green shadows, and I'm going to also add in a little bit of blue. So let's go ahead. I'm going to grab some of this green shadow first. Let's put some of that right here. And then, you know what, I might need to put some of it right here because I need to, like, water that down a little bit. Love the two lower blooms. I know. Look at them. Ah, oh, I'm going to water this green shadow down just a smidge. And then we're going to come in. I'm going to show you how I do my leaf reap. So I've got quite a bit, probably about a 2% um, milk strength of this pigment. We're going to come in from this side, probably here here, maybe a little bit down here. But let's start up here. And my leafery, I'm just kind of coming out. I've got my brush kind of up and down, straight up and vertical. And then I'm drawing a quick little line. And then with the whole entire belly of the brush, just drawing some leafery. 
Oh, love it. I'm going to make that connection right here and just kind of draw out that leafery a little bit. And I've got that first little layer going. I'm going to grab some sap green. Let's put some sap green down here. And I'm going to go over that layer. That's just a nice little layer, but I'm going to create some texture and a little bit more dimension here. So let's go over that layer. And I'm going to grab a little bit of blue. Oops, let's clean this up. Susanna said she's tried Daniel Smith watercolors. Also the gold green that you use in one of your Christmas tree panels. Oh, gold green. I love that look. Here's a gold green right here or a green gold. I have to show you that color. Look at that color. Ah, I love it. We're going to be actually using that color too. So, uh, okay, a little bit of blue. I'm going to do this. I'm going to load my brush with both colors. Cleaning off my brush, just tapping it off a little bit so it's not super, super wet. Grab some of that sap green and then take my tip of my brush and put it in my blue. And I'm going to come back down here and I'm just going to create some more. Let's grab some of that sap green and that blue and create some more leafery. And then I've got some layers going here. So you can see I've got layers up and down. Get a little bit of that blue green kind of effect happening. And just having some fun with this. Now my brush started to go a little bit dry, but I don't hate that. I love the way that looks. I love that mixture of that blue and that green. Here's that sap green. Let's kind of come in here. Add a little bit more out here. Just using that belly of the brush to create that sap green look. If you're an acrylic painter, this technique isn't new. Um, it's used a lot with acrylic painters, and it was developed by, I want to say, I hope I don't screw this up, Donna Dewberry. I mean, back in the day, she used to call, she used to do loading the brush. You would load your brush with one color, and then you would add another color to, like, the tip of it. And I'm doing it with watercolor. And I just love mixing those two colors together. Arlene just shared, love the transparency of the green layer. See, so we get that green and that blue mixing. We get some of that texture happening from the tip of the brush. Now, we use the sap green in the White Knights brand in the, um, in the tube. Now, I want to show you how beautiful and juicy it looks straight from the pan. It looks beautiful and juicy. Let's grab another little piece of watercolor paper over here. Look at that. So really, I'm not finding that much of a difference between the pans and the um, and the tubes. So it really is a preference thing. I like tubes, tube paint a lot when I want to get a big honk of brush in here and I want to work in wells. But I do love working with pans as well. And look at that. That's a lot of paint. A lot of paint. Okay. Now, I want to come down here. Let's do, like, another set of leafery. I might need to flip this. I'm going to flip this a little bit this way. And let's kind of load up our color again. We've got color everywhere. Grab some more sap green and grab some more of that green shadow. See, I'm just kind of diving my brush in there and getting a lot of pigment there. Clean off my brush. And you notice I haven't changed brushes yet. I'm still using this big honking number 10 round. That's what I love about round brushes is that you can get them to come to a really nice fine point. Okay. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Now look at the transparency of this green. This color is called green shadow. Look at our geranium green popping through right there. That's why I love watercolor so much is because you get all of this extra added texture and dimension simply by painting with transparent watercolors. 
and adding layers. So you get all this extra look and feel that's quite unexpected. And every brand's a little bit different. The White Knights brand is very transparent. And I'm, I've got three big honking leaves here. I need to tie them together somehow. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome. Thank goodness for replays, right? And I'm going to do some big honking leafery little pieces that are going to kind of connect that now out here. Let's take a little bit of sap green and just kind of create, taking the very, very tip of my brush here and just creating these little droplets that kind of mimic. It's kind of like a pattern, but it kind of mimics a little bit of some green, a little bit of greenery, and I'm just kind of connecting them with the very tip of the brush just to get a little bit of an organic shape here. It kind of helps fill in my leafery. Now our leafery kind of looks, I always call this kind of crab-like leafery. We got this kind of crabby look happening here, right? We've got our big composition piece here and some leafery happening. It'll come together, don't worry. I'm gonna flip this around. Oh, look at this. Lisa and her hot mess, right? Let's tidy that up a little bit. I like to move my paper around um, when I'm working. So let's go ahead. I'm going to grab, let's come in here and get some sap green. I'm kind of holding this. I've got, also have little droplets happening all over my paper. That's okay. Digging it. Loving it. Pause and paint. We're having a pause and paint. All right, I'm going to come out here. And look, so I'm just going to make these swooshy swooshes. I'm going to pick up some of that blue with my sap green and just start painting big honking pieces of leafery. Oh, love it. Love it. It's so easy. Let me know in the chat if everyone thinks I should do. I do a lot of leafery in individual um, individual tutorials. But let me know in the chat if I should do an upcoming tutorial that's just about brush, strokey, brush strokes and creating leafery. We could just kind of focus on that a little bit if everybody thinks it might be useful. Oh, don't love that. Let's just kind of add some little leafery bits kind of popping out here. Kind of loving the colors. Now I'm going to come out. I'm going to add, I'm going to take a little bit of this perylene violet I have over here. Oh, Dawn, that's such a great idea. I saw another crafter use a turntable so she could turn her work. You know what? I've got a turntable. I think that's a great idea. Like a little lazy Susan, right? I wonder like if that would, I wonder how wonky that would be for me. <laughs> I'm going to try it. That's a really great idea since I'm always turning. It's a really great idea for, um, for videos too. Just kind of creating another little a um, little bit of filler over here. All right, now let's come back. Ah, everybody's saying yes to brush curve stroke construction. You could do a tutorial on how to fill your water, and <laughs> that's so funny. How to fill your water, and we would what? Well, my water is looking pretty dirty right now, but that's okay. And I also didn't fill a second water so that I would have a clean brush and a and a not so clean brush. Um, so, you know, I don't know that that would be that interesting, but brush strokes. I think leafery would be fun as we're heading into spring. Doing a leafery video would be a lot of fun. All right, I've got a little blooping happening here that I'm not loving, but I love, look, look at this like droplets of water here that I've dropped in. I'm gonna come over here and show you something. This is still wet. I'm gonna drop some water this is about, just drop some water droplets inside of these wet areas and let the watercolor do its thing. That's pretty dry, so 
and what it's going to do is just kind of give me that that um, give me that little bit of extra water going. Now this is drying right here, and look, I'm just going to feather it out with a clean brush. Just didn't like how it just deposited itself in a funky way, so I'm just going to feather it out. I lifted it up a little bit. See how I was able to pull it away and get a little bit of that white happening there. Kind of digging that. All right, let's come back to our flowers. I got a little bit of green happening. This right here, see how this is the the water has kind of pulled up and it's pushing back some of that color right there. That's kind of cool. I like it. I leave it. I think it looks really good. We're going to let all this dry and I'm going to move on. Now we've got our big three honking flowers. And we're going to add another layer. You know, I'm going to have to move this. I'm going to have to move that because I'm just going to end up putting my hand on it, in it. Arlene just shared, I love the contrast from the looser blooms and the more defined leafery. Yes. And now we're going to come in and get a little bit more definition in some of our blooms and that adds some little tiny filler blooms. Um, Zan, that's a great idea. She just shared that I have started using three pint sized mason jars, one for clean, one for warm color washing and one for cool color washing. And my extra, <laughs> that's so funny. You're hilarious today. And my extra, no, you're not extra. A lot of people do it that way. Like if you're working with warm colors, you want to keep, uh, keep your cleaning your brush in one of those jars. If you're working with cool colors, my brain just nerds out so much during the painting process that if I had all those jars, I would, inevitably have them all dirty and mixed up with colors. So that's why I don't do it. I'm lucky if I pull one jar to uh, clean my brush when I get started, sometimes forget. Okay. So, but technically like if you had two jars, one that was for dirty and one that was for clean, that could kind of keep things helpful. Um, oh, Cheryl just shared about her. Hi, Alicia. Cheryl just shared about her, um, turntable that she, that Kathy Z uses. Yeah, Kathy uses one for her Gemini. That's a great idea. I love that idea. All right, I'm going to come in. I'm going to add a little bit of definition to our big honking blooms. Then I'm going to come in with some opaque, some of our opaque colors and add some filler. So let's go in here with a little bit of this dioxazine violet. Let's grab some. Full strength. Okay, and I'm just going to come in and drop a few little droplets here. And then just lightly touch it with my wet brush. And just kind of blend it out just a little bit. But notice that I'm not, I'm just cleaning off my brush in between. And I'm just going to feather that color out. I don't want to... I don't want to go in and make the whole stroke for the flower. I just want you to have that illusion that we've got a flower shape happening. We've got the abstract look. It also adds quite a bit of attention to detail to the center. I'm going to grab a little bit of that violet, drop a little bit right there in the center, and let that do its thing. So we definitely have that shape happening. Now I'm going to come in and do it right here with our neon pink one. Except I'm going to come in this time. I'm grabbing a little bit of this carmine color. Let's pop carmine over here. Oops. Into this neon pink. I love all the chat that you guys, you, that you have going in the chat about how you set up your watercolor stations when you're watercoloring. So our flower here is definitely a blob, right? But we've got a little bit of movement happening. I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. Just adding a little bit of color here. And we're going to go in. Clean brush. As clean as it's going to be with my dirty water here. And just kind of tap, tap, tap and feather. Tap and feather. Tap, tap, tap. Feather this out. So I'm drawing some attention to the center of that flower, feathering it out, 
out on these outer edges just by tapping it with a clean brush. And then we've got that another layer of that flower. And flowers have a lot of petal layers. So this is just, oh, I love it. All right, take a little bit of that color, drop it in the center. So these are our, this is the way I do loose, washy, washy flowers. Ah, everybody's chatting about their different uh, things that they use on their desk. I love that. I'm going to come up here to our big honking, um, our big honking rosette. And then I'm just going to just very tip of my brush, just add a few strokes. Just very, very tip of my brush. Just adding a few strokes to add a little bit more dimension. Just another layer. Tap, tap, tapping it out, feathering them out. Just lightly touching. See how I'm just dancing my brush around this flower. Ooh, got a little wild hair. Look at that. Just to add a little bit more detail in that center. Now while that's going, I'm going to take a little bit of this pink. This is carmine and that neon pink. I'm just going to drop it in a couple of the wet spots and let it do its thing. It just adds that extra. If you ever look, roses are really difficult to paint realistically, so I don't even try because I don't want to. <laughs> I like painting them this way and having that very loose, washy look. And see how I'm just dropping some of that color? So we've taken those original blobs and we've made blooms. I love that. I'm not really choked up on the brush. I'm kind of holding it out here just to kind of keep it loose. Yeah. Alicia just said the same thing, and you're not holding the brush tightly or at the end. Sometimes I'll hold it way out here if I just kind of want to, you know, get a little feathering going. But I'm digging that. And I don't mind if it mixes in with this blue a little bit. Let's let it. I think that's the beautiful part of watercolor is letting some of that mix. Now, even though some of these areas are dry, you can see that I can go back in and kind of reconstitute it, right, and get it going again. And that's another beautiful thing about watercolor is that you can always kind of come in with a little bit of wet water and get it to move. Love it. Okay. Keeping with this being wet, now we're going to add in a layer. I'm kind of digging it the way it looks, but where we have our leafery, we have quite a few open spaces that are create that are making my eye kind of go to those spots and I want to see something there. So we're going to go in. I'm going to go in with some of these uh, colors in the White Knight set. So these, this lavender, lilac, pink peony, magnolia, rose quartz, and coral. These are all watercolors in that set that have white added to them. So they have a little bit more opacity. Oh, and the peach too. I think we're going to work with these two. This coral, this rose quartz, or maybe that magnolia. Let's see. And I'm going to add some little baby flowers. Let's see. Where's that coral? Coral's right here. So you can see when I just add a little bit of water to it. See how much pigment is there? So these are pretty opaque. Sort of like a gouache, but not as opaque as a gouache. I'm going to drop a little tiny bloom, same way I did with the five points. Just drop that right in there, clean off my brush, and then just kind of feather that out a little bit. So we do have that illusion of that bloom. Kind of just happening. It's starting to look a little bit like a hot mess, but we're going to recover. I'm going to come back in with some detail and let that mix in there. All right, come in with... Let's take this pink color. Let's drop a pink one right down here. Well, this is a lilac. That's all right. Kind of digging it. It adds a little bit of milky, milkiness. You know, this little bit of extra white. Now, you don't need this. We're going to nerd out a little bit. You don't need these paints to make this happen. Remember, you can take it, and I've talked about this many times on the channel. 
you can take a little bit of your, look at that, that bled in there a little bit. You could take a little bit of white wash or a white paint, even like the Dr. P.H. Martins, and add it to your watercolor, and you can get this opaque color. Ah, Cheryl just says, love the pause and paint segments. This is going to be fun. Composition. Ah, oh, very forgiving. Yes, very forgiving for newbies. If you're getting started, so I've got some opaque here, some opaque here. I'm going to add a little something right here. If you're just getting started, I'm trying to decide what color I want to use. Let's go with the lilac. Um, if you're just getting started, or oh, this is lavender. Now, other brands have opaque watercolors. Daniel Smith has a lavender that's absolutely beautiful. I just like adding a little bit of opacity to your work. And again, you could you do the same technique with a little bit of Dr. P.H. Martin's. Look at that opacity there. I can just take my brush, clean brush, just touch a little bit. I don't want to touch it too much. See how it's mixing in with my green here, but that's okay. See, I'm also letting just this splatters happen. You can dab them off. Just let it all happen. It's what makes it all like super wet and washy. I want to do something right here. So I'm going to come in with something a little bit more dramatic. I'm going to come in with this. Um, what color is this? This is peach. Hi, Sue. Oh, the replay will always be here, friends. If everybody's kind of dropping, it's been, it has been a while. If you're dropping in late, no worries. It's pause and paint day. We're just painting and I'm nerding out and kind of talking a little bit about watercolor along the way. Kind of covering a bunch of different things. We talked about value scales today. We're talking about composition. A little bit. I don't know that this is actually, ooh, that's a mess. Let's just take that out. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. But I'm going to leave what's here. I might add. It's because it wasn't dry. So it's just kind of doing its thing. Let's just let's just take that out and leave it be. I don't want to mess with this a little bit more. One of the things that um, is important to know is like when to stop. Sometimes we don't always know when to stop, right? I feel like we've got a little bit of a better connection. Add a little bit of this color. Just dropping some stuff in. This one really didn't, kind of didn't make it. So let's just dry this a little bit. And I'm going to go over top of it. Uh, Alicia loves the replays. The replays are fantastic, especially if you're following along. You can always just pause, paint, come back. Rewind. That's the beautiful thing about it. No, not that color. Let's come in with a little bit of that coral. Let's see if I can get a little definition going here. See how I'm just dropping in little drop, little tiny petals. Just trying to get a little bit of definition. I don't want there to be a ton of definition. I just want there to be the illusion that there's a flower there. So we can definitely see a flower here, here, here. We got a little one here, we got a little one here. We got one that looks like a bloop here. Let's just tidy that one up a little bit. And I love doing this wet into wet because look at all, all these layers are blending together. We've got a very, I'm gonna clean off my brush and kind of pull that back. See how I just pulled that away so that I can get a little bit of definition between those pinks and that color right there. All right, now, kind of liking my leafery, kind of loving this washy washy look. I think I'm going to stop the painting part and we're going to go into adding some details. But you know what? Before I do that, listen to me. Before I do that, I'm going to pick up a little bit. No, that was a mistake. Shouldn't have done that. Kind of blooped it too much. I wanted to add just a little bit of splatter, but this is coming out a little bit too much, so that's okay. 
also a little bit need hold on I need to bring in a cleaner cloth that cloth was getting super super wet just kind of pull away I kind of like what I did there this one was a little bit of a mess but that's okay all right we're gonna dry and then we're gonna go in with a little bit of colored pencil detail Loving the way that looks. Super washing. Alright, what do we got here? Okay, feeling good about that. I want to bring in like my original inspiration so you can kind of see. I could definitely go in and add a little bit more watercolor and create a little bit more of a definition, like more defined flower. But I'm not going to do that. I really kind of like the way this is looking. It looks very, um, very washy, very ethereal, very abstract I'm just kind of digging it all right so now we're gonna come in with some color pencils let's move let's move our watercolors out of my space a little bit we're gonna come in with some color pencils let's kind of clean up the area a little bit now in some of these areas where my blooms are not as well defined I can come in with a little bit of colored pencil work so this right here is mauve, and I'm gonna come in, I'm kind of holding, I'm not choked up on the pencil, I'm kind of holding it out here a little bit, and I'm just gonna drop it, it, it feels a little bit wet there. Hold on. Now, you could let this go as is and your painting would be done, but we're adding a little bit of extra colored pencil work in here just to enhance some of the color and you can see I'm just using the pencil from the side and because I'm using I'm using a 100% cotton cold press paper and there's some texture in the paper so we get that little bit of texture that happens that sits on top of the watercolor that adds to your painting you could also use your watercolor pencils friends if you have watercolor pencils, a little bit of nerding here. If you have some watercolor pencils, you could use those instead of colored pencils, and just don't um, just don't add water to them. Just leave that texture. See the texture that's happening? Let's see. Let's see if we can come in really tight so we can see that texture. Hopefully that holds. The camera holds. Holy smokes, it does. Do you see that texture right there and you see some of those lines? It just adds a little bit more dimension to your project. And we've, we've done all of this on one piece of paper. That's what I think is so super fascinating. All right, let's pull out a little bit, but not too far. Let's stay in a little bit tighter here. All right, I'm going to come in. Now I've got magenta. We've got this really hot, hot pink happening. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta to some of these darker areas. Just kind of flush it out a little bit to some of these outer areas. And see how the tooth of the paper is picking up the color and it's adding that texture. It's really starting to kind of, this is what I love. And you know what, friends, this is, this is technically, let me hold my pencil out a little further. This is technically a mixed media technique. And by mixed media is when you add another medium on top of a medium you've already used. Sometimes we think of mixed media as collage and it is. But this is a really great way to use color pencils and I know you all have them in your stash with your watercolors. See how I'm just adding a little bit and letting, very gentle, and I'm letting the tooth of the paper 
just kind of pick up that color. Look at that. Ah, that texture. It already added a little bit more lift to it. Let's come in. I've got this wonky flower over here. I'm going to come in with this cream pencil. And I'm just going to kind of come in and add a little bit of definition and shape. It just feels like I'm scratching it on the surface, and I kind of am. And I'm just adding my petal shape. Just kind of hugging around like where a petal would go. Just to kind of bring that little filler flower to life just a little bit. And even that little bit of work has just kind of brought it forward a little bit. I've got that petal here. I've got this, this little guy right here. You can kind of see, um, see it right here. I'm going to see what color will bring it to life a little bit. Let's do fuchsia. Let's pop some fuchsia in here. Start from the center and just kind of work in that petal sheet. Just bring it to life just a little bit. Not in a really well-defined way, right? Just a little bit of an abstract way. And I've got a light hand going here. And we've already started to bring that out a little bit. I'm going to come in with some of that mauve right here and see if I can get that illusion of that petal back right here. And I'm bringing it back. Just get that petal, just a little bit of definition here so that your eye is making the connection that there's a petal there. Right there. And right there. So we've get that connection. If I come in here with a white pencil, just kind of gently go over what I did, I can bring some of those highlights back. Ah, we've got that, we've got that coming. I don't really like the way that's looking right here. A little bit of a hard edge, so I'm going to take my white and just kind of go over that a little bit. I'm digging that. Added some detail here. I don't feel like we need a ton of detail in this rosette. We've got this, we've got a lot going on there, so I don't feel like we need a ton of detail. But I do want to grab, what is this, Payne's Gray. I've got, oh, that's small. I thought I had a blue. So I've got a permanent green. And a deep cobalt. All right, this deep cobalt color is going to be great. I'm just going to come in and just kind of add some really loose marks. Just to bring a little bit of definition. You can even just kind of come out a little bit. See, I'm just going a little rogue. Add a little definition to the leafery. Keep in keeping with that abstract, just come in, add a few dots. I'm kind of digging that. Let's come over here. And this one, I just want to kind of use it from the side and just kind of rub it in to what's already here because there's so much texture going on there. Oh my gosh, I'm really loving the way this came out. Just adding a few little bits. This little guy kind of lost its way, my little filler flower. So I'm just going to come in with a little, what pencil is this? This is fuchsia. I'm just kind of go over what we did. Just to bring it back to life a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging this, the way this looks. Now, for lines that become a little bit too harsh, you can take your color pencil and just go over them. And I'm going over it with a, like a medium pressure. And I can kind of bleed, blend them out a little bit. That's the other beautiful thing about uh, color pencil. Is that if you don't like a harsh line that you've made, look, I can kind of go over it and blend it in. And I'm holding my pencil out pretty far. You could use the white, the white pencil or your cream color pencil. It also just kind of adds a little bit of highlights back in. Ah. Cheryl just said the colors are so beautiful. They are. I'm really pleased with. Let's come in with this deep cobalt green, like right here. I want to hug this side a little bit. 
and just kind of be a little exaggerated here and just kind of show you. These colors are really beautiful. Um, again, that White Knights brand that we used today, that I used today, I love it. Very, very vibrant. All right, kind of digging this. Feel like I should stop. Let me pull out a little bit. But something is calling me. Something is calling me to add something. And I think it might be just a little bit right here just to get a little bit of definition around that petal that'll draw your eye out a little bit. A little bit more definition there. So this whole floral composition is just very abstract in nature. Ah, Sue just said, I see that you're holding the pencil low. I can't seem to hold mine like that. Why do you hold the pencil like this? This is a really good question. And I know I've covered this in a couple other color pencils. I hold the pencil like this. And I don't think this is a lefty or a righty thing. But I hold the pencil like this because I can get some really good pressure. Um, if I hold it like you would normally when you're writing, you're putting, you're pushing in to the paper with the tip. When I hold it like this, I'm able to push in with the side of the pencil and I can really kind of control the look that I want to achieve and I kind of blended that out I got that going and I'm really kind of digging that so I hope that helped answer your question okay now I'm kind of digging this I feel like we should we should stop because if I keep going I might do too much. Now, if you don't have color pencils, I want to point out that you can always add more texture and dimension just with a smaller brush. So let me grab this purple, a little bit of this dioxazine, and watch, I could always add in some graphic details with a brush. If you wanna get super, um, I'm gonna blend this out just a little bit. I'm gonna grab a different brush and blend this out. You can always do your graphic details with your watercolor and a brush. But I want these, I'm actually gonna leave those lines there. Since we are working in like a super washy look, let's see. I'm gonna minimize the amount of super graphic, um, super graphic, lines that I'm going to do in this painting. So let's just brush this out just a smidge. There we go. Digging it. Digging it. All right, I'm going to resist the urge to keep going because I'll end up making mud. So Sue, I hope that helped me answer your question. Give it a try. All right, I'm going to let this be. Let's pull out just a little bit so that we can see where we were. I'm going to let this be what it is. Here was my original. So definitely a little bit more controlled, um, but I definitely have that washy effect. This is, this is kind of like the way I like to paint, like super, super washy. Washy. Okay, friends. All right, I'm going to pop back in. I'm back. I hope... You got a lot out of today's tutorial. We had a lot of questions along the way. There was quite a bit of nerding out. Um, these pause and paint tutorials are super fun. I feel like we can just pop in and kind of paint along together. Um, and I like to do this maybe like once or twice a month. So far we've been doing it once a month and adding a couple of different things in. And it gives me an opportunity to talk with you about different brands of watercolor without just having a whole video be about that particular brand. We're actually making something together. So if you're on my email list, you're getting this information sent to you um, via email, like when I'm going to do the pause and paints and when and what supplies to kind of bring to the pause and paint. If you're not on my email list, I would encourage you to join. Um, the links are down below in the description to join the email list if you'd like. 
And if you do, you get like a freebie. So why not, right? All right. If you have any other questions after, if you're watching this on the replay or afterwards, please don't hesitate to just pop them in the chat and I will come in and answer them. Had a ton of fun. Let's just take another quick look at today's composition. I really love this. I think this would make a really great card front. It's really big right now, but it would really make a really nice card front for spring or a Mother's Day card or something fun like that. Um, yeah, I love that. Loving it. Okay. All right, friends. Thanks for joining me on this Wednesday. It's a, I know it's an unusual day, but I kind of like going live on Wednesdays. I'd love to hear your feedback. I love Wednesdays and Fridays because I feel like Wednesday is the middle of the week and it can carry us through with some inspiration to the end of the week. And I love going out uh, live on Fridays because it carries us through the weekend with some inspiration. So I hope you all learned a ton of interesting techniques today in our pause and paint or this little happy washi floral. Um, I'm going to encourage you to join my email list. You can also join my a free community at crafterjoy.com. All the information is down below in the description. And I will be popping back in to the live description and adding the supplies I used today if there was anything that you were interested in. So friends, thanks so much for joining me. Um, have a great rest of your week and I will be back next week. And it'll probably most likely be towards the end of the week. I didn't look at that before I came live and I should have. So, all right. It'll probably be Thursday or Friday, but have a great weekend. I see everybody saying thank you. Um, yeah. Hit like and subscribe. Apparently that makes a difference, but all right. I've rambled enough. I hope you enjoyed today. Have a fantastic rest of your week and I'll see you next week. Bye friends.